Hey everyone, this is Neil Barnhill with the Barnhill Golf Institute, helping you find your winning way. I'm glad to present the number six episode of our Golf Weekly News show called The Drive. All right, uh, Justin Rose won the FedEx Cup. He didn't have his best day overall, but the course was playing very tough at East Lake this past weekend. The final round, there was not too many low scores. He hit a great seven iron that took a great bounce over the trap on number 18 and he made a birdie to win the title. Obviously Tiger Woods, he won the Tour Championship this past week. Number 18 to finish when he was walking up to the green was incredible. I have personally never seen anything like that. There must have been thousands and thousands of people chanting Tiger, Tiger, Tiger. I mean it was so loud. I had goosebumps watching that. You could tell he was holding back the tears when, when that was going on. It was just an incredible scene. What a great thing for the golf world. He won. It's been over five years since he won in 2013. And we've got the final results for the FedEx. We'll, we'll put it for the FedEx Cup standings. I'll go over it and we'll put, post it here. We had Justin Rose, number one. Tiger Woods, number two. Bryson DeChambeau, number three. Four was Dustin Johnson. Number five was Billy Horschel. Number six was Tony Finau. Seven, Justin Thomas. Eight, Keegan Bradley. Nine, Brooks Kepka, And 10, Bubba Watson. All right, I wanna talk about both the players, Justin Rose and Tiger Woods. I wanna start off with Justin Rose and a big shout out to him. The perseverance these guys have, it's absolutely incredible. Justin Rose, he just became the world number one player and this didn't happen by chance. He has been grinding it for t over 20 years. His first 21 PGA tournaments, if you did not know, he missed the cut. So this guy has been a true warrior, true definition of a pro that has fought for it, works hard, got great discipline, keeps his body in shape. Number one was his goal in mind, so for him to win this was always one of his goals to win the FedEx Cup title. Big shout out to you, Justin Rose. Um, very proud of what you've done and what you stand for. And definitely is a great role model for our juniors growing up to look at, look at you, okay? All right, Tiger Woods perseverance. Holy cow, where do we start with this? Who would have thought he would ever be back in the winner's circle after four major back surgeries, this last one. They were saying he may not even ever play golf again with the back fusion. And it's not only that, He's had troubles off the golf course. He's had the chipping yips. So he has had so many obstacles to overcome that it is truly a miracle that he is standing back in the winner's circle. And you can tell that he, he is definitely more relatable to us golf fans out there with the, with the welcome he got from the crowd. You could see that in the golfing community. It was just incredible to watch him on Sunday as he won that, and it gives us hope, and it, I believe it gives him hope. He is gonna win some more major championships if he stays healthy, but wow, what a true warrior. From a year ago, December, he was barely hitting little chip shots, to now in September, he's won a tournament, and he competed in two major championships this year, so we're in a good place in the game, so. Shout out to you, Tiger Woods. Uh, congratulations on your win. All right, let's move right along to our Ryder Cup. We've got two days, before, actually three days, it's starting on Friday. We're gonna have an incredible Ryder Cup. It's over in Paris, and the U.S. team has not won on foreign soil since 1993. So, you can do the math, it's been a while. So it's gonna be interesting. We have a lot of firepower our USA team is led by Dustin Johnson, and we got Brooks Kepka, we've got Justin Thomas, Bryson DeChambeau, Ricky Fowler, Jordan Spieth, Tiger Woods, Bubba Watson, Patrick Reed, Webb Simpson, Tony Finau, and Phil Mickelson. The ones I, I think are coming in hot from the FedEx Cup and how they played towards the end of the regular season. Tony Finau and Webb Simpson have been playing incredible. It's gonna be interesting to see how Coach Furick plays them. And we also got Dustin Johnson, who's just, he's been playing great. Brooks Kepka, he's th he was three and one in the last Ryder Cup. 
So he's been playing good. We're gonna see how he does. You know, and we got three newbies. We got Justin Thomas, Bryson DeChambeau, and Tony Finau who have not played in the Ryder Cup before. So it will be interesting to see how they perform. But we are stacked with younger players, some veterans, with Tiger in there. It's gonna be must see TV. I mean, I can't wait to watch this. Europe, we've got Justin Rose, Francisco Molinari, number three, Rory McIlroy, number four, John Rahm, five, Tommy Fleetwood, number six, Alexander Norn, number seven, Paul Casey, eight, Henrik Stenson, nine, Terrell Hatton, 10, Sergio Garcia, 11, Ian Poulter, and number 12, Thorbjorn Olsen. So, looks like they're gonna rely on some of the veterans in this. McElroy and Justin Rose will definitely need to get a lot of points. But you never can tell in this format. When they're over there, the adrenaline, the players that haven't been playing good, such as a Sergio Garcia, he seems to always play good in this format. He's got a 19, 11, and seven record. Also, Ian Poulter, wow. I mean, his career could be defined by the Ryder Cup. He has a 12, four, and two record. He always rises to the occasion on this, so I would not be surprised to see him play outstanding in this event. Also, you got Rory, nine, six, and four. Justin's 11, six, and two. These guys are gonna play great. It's gonna be something to watch. The format, Friday and Saturday, we'll have four ball matches, and then Sunday on the conclusion, we'll have single matches, which is always incredible. So, all right, I am fired up for that as well as you should be too. So, let's uh, buckle in, get some popcorn, and uh, get ready for some exciting, incredible golf. The Ryder Cup is one of the, it's up there with the watching the Olympics. It only comes around a couple of years, and this year with everything going on in the world of golf, it's gonna be extra special, so I can't wait. This is awesome. Okay, let's move along to our quote of the week, this segment. All right, I got a great quote from the man who just won a tour championship. And it goes, the greatest thing about tomorrow is I will be better than I am today. What a great quote, says it all right there. So that's from Tiger Woods. All right, we're gonna move right along to our rants and raves edition. Today I'm going to start out with the rant. Um, I've been playing a lot of golf and I'm noticing as a lot of you guys out there play weekend golf or play quite a bit, the slow play. I mean it's just, it just seems to be getting worse. Uh, players that are shooting hundreds, 110, 120, taking multiple practice swings, they're not ready to play when, they're, when it's their turn to play. They take three practice swings and they get over the ball and they hit it, duff it 10 feet. The divot goes further than the ball. And then they do it again after doing that. I do not understand it at all. You can be bad, you can play bad, but you can still play fast. There's nothing that bothers me worse than a slow player. And there's slow players that are good players. So, uh, you know, but bad players, there's no need for that. So there needs to be some kind of communication within the group to pick up the pace. Um, in a nice manner, like, hey, we got to move. Or for the Rangers out on the golf courses to make that important on the first tee to, hey, you got to keep up with the group in front of you. Whatever it is, this is just, it's just, one group can hold up everybody in a round of golf, and there's just no need for it. Um, it's recreation, we go out there to play, we want to enjoy ourselves, but who wants to play a five hour, five hour and a half round of golf? No need. We, no need that it should be always be three and a half to four hours so i think something maybe we can do to help that as pga members is i know years ago they offered it overseas that if you started playing golf as a beginner you had to take a rules and etiquette course and you had to take three lessons from a pga member to be allowed on a golf course and you had to provide a certificate i think that's a great idea that definitely would give some knowledge to some of these players that are slow a lot of them just don't know so um, it's not necessarily their fault, but as PGA members, we could probably do something to resolve this issue by making it important and doing something about it. So that's my shout out for the rant this week, and hopefully we can get better at this. My rave, wow, the state of the game of golf, I think it's probably in one of the best places it's ever been. We've got Tiger Woods up there 
he has gone from a ranking of, don't quote me on it, some 1,150, might have been even higher to now, I believe he's currently ranked number 13. Wow, that's incredible. He's going to have a, we're looking forward to next year and what he's going to do. This Ryder Cup is going to be outstanding. Game is in a great spot with all the young players that grew up watching Tiger and doing fitness, nutrition, getting themselves in shape, wanting to be like Tiger. Now they're competing with Tiger and Tiger's competing with them. Wow, this is incredible to watch this. So uh, the next few years are going to be very, very, very exciting to watch and I can't wait. I, the game of golf and juniors is exploding right now and this is definitely going to help it. So. That's my rave for the week because I believe the state of the game of golf is in such a great place and I'm excited to be a part of it. All right, the equipment review. I, I did a little bit of this on week one episode where I talked about my equipment in my bag, the Callaway Rogue. Well, I'm going to talk, talk specifically about my driver and my three wood. Man, they're incredible. The driver, the Rogue, I got a nine and a half degree. I got fit for it. I got the revolution down to spin rate. It was right around 2100. My club head speed went up to about 106. And it I've gained 30 yards in carry with this club because I had a 14-year-old driver that I had. So I have nothing but good things to say about the road woods. The three wood, I've used it a lot while I've been getting my game back. It's just very accurate. I love the look of the woods. It feels good, it looks good, the the way the shafts kick, I got the right fit for it. I believe I've got a 13 degree and it hits pretty, eh, get some good loft on it, it doesn't go low, I get good height with it. So it can go into par fives when I got 240, 250, it can go in there and stop. But great woods, I highly recommend it. if you have something older, you know, older than five, six years, even three or four years, hey, go out and get club fit go to your local PGA Superstore or Golf Galaxy, get fit, use the TrackMan, use their technology to get the spin rate down that's proper for your club head speed, and try the different woods. It's not just the Callaway ones. I mean, there's different. TaylorMade's got the M4 Twist. You've got the Ping. You can try all kind of different drivers out there. But bottom line is get out there and take the time to, to try the new woods definitely and probably will benefit from the new technology and gain some yardage if you get all your numbers right so that's my equipment review this week and for more information on everything in golf as far as my blogs and vlogs please visit me at barnhillgolf.com <laughs>